Now, plans are offered to, fi uh, to Hitler. Hitler decides on these plans. By December of 1940, he's already selected a plan. Whose plan is it? His plan. It's not, you know, what the German high command has told him or other, other generals. He selected his plan. Now, it's kind of ironic because Hitler was, a, what, what was his rank in World War I? Corporal. Corporal. I don't think corporals are involved in theater planning, are they? <laughs> okay. Also ironic is the name that he selects for this campaign. He calls it Operation Barbarossa. Well, if you know anything about Emperor Frederick Barbarossa, he was one of the dream team that the Pope had selected to, to lead the Third Crusade. Well, when he was making his way to the Holy Land, Emperor Barbarossa decided that the bridge that the troops were going over was too slow. So he launched into a river with this horse with full armor on. What happened to the poor horse and poor Emperor Barbarossa? They drowned. And the, the, church, the troops from the Holy Roman Empire were in such disarray that they couldn't continue the war and had to go back home. In fact, there were thousands that, dis that departed. In fact, almost 50,000, 5,000 made it back. So what an ironic name to pick. The other thing is they're planning for 41. The Balkans happen. Now, this is what's interesting. Russia is building up consistently. January of 39 to, to, to June of 40, which is about two years and a half, they've increased their units from 131 divisions to 316. That's incredible. This is a huge army. Well, it's a huge army without a lot of skill and a lot of leadership, and that's going to be the problem. You know, we talk about the number of personnel that increased, borders, everything is gearing up. Now, the problem is, in the initial phases, the Soviets will be decimated. And when we look at the attack itself, there's four phases. Starting with phase one, Hitler decides that he's going to divide his army into three army groups. Army group north, army group center, and army group south. Center is going to focus on the Latvian states with the ultimate goal of getting to Leningrad. Why Leningrad? It's industrial and it also has historical importance to who? Soviet Union, why? It used to be the former what? Capital of the Tsar, Tsar's Republic. Or not Republic, but Empire. So the other thing that we're going to look at is Army Group Central is going to be aimed at the Ukraine with the ultimate goal of making it to Moscow. Cut right through the center. Go right through the, the flatlands beeline to Moscow. And the group going to the south will take in Kiev and start heading for the oil fields. So here you go, your northern group heading towards Leningrad, which is right up here in the corner. I don't know, that pointer doesn't seem to work on the screen. Okay, up to the point, and then we got the other group going to Moscow, southern end moving towards eventually what will be Stalingrad, but their ultimate goal is to get down in here to uh, caucuses and the oil. First weeks, unbelievable. They move with such lightning rapidity, the German Army and the Air Force, knocking out thousands of planes right on the airfield. And what we also know is the German planes fly faster, they're more agile, they're able to take out Soviet fighters and bombers that get up. The bombers are, they can't even carry enough munitions to make a difference. They're carrying about 20% of the load that the German bombers can carry. So it's really a, not a, a comparable fight. The Germans use a very unique plan. They move through the areas, and when they encounter resistance in cities, what do they do? Surround the cities, and they keep going, trapping large units of Russian troops behind them. Why did they do that? They feel that the German, or the Russians, because of their poor leadership component, plus they're isolated from supplies, they'll eventually capitulate or they'll end up fighting to death. Now you have to also remember 
that nobody wants to retreat. Why, do they, why are they fearing retreat? Stalin will have them what? Shot. Shot. And in fact, as the fight begins to unfold, Stalin will be putting up political troops to backwash in these areas the main units. And if they do break, they're instructed to shoot who? Their own. So this is a constant fear. Nobody wants to be the one that bolts. They fell over each other. They attacked the waves. The Russian next wave came, they fell over the dead ones. I talked to machine gunners which were on the Russian front. And he said the first wave comes, they couldn't go back because they were shot by political commissioners. Yeah. The second wave comes, falls over the dead ones. They're shot. Yeah, well, it's a mass slaughter. And you're right. You're right. Now, the other thing we have to understand is the German mechanized units, these panzers, are moving at least twice as fast as the infantry. And while they're scoring successes, they're outracing their infantry units. And this becomes a problem because the infantry can't keep up. They hadn't developed the idea of trucking or moving troops, what we call mechanized infantry, moving them up by truck. They made them, made them walk. They didn't have enough vehicles, the Germans did, to keep up. And that becomes a problem. So the Panzers are scoring great victories. They're outracing their supplies. They're outracing their troops. And they have to hold up for the other guys to catch up. Well, if you're moving half as fast, this is going to be a problem. And that becomes an issue. They have to actually, by August, start telling people to... Slow it down. You're going too fast. Well, this is going to be too costly for the Germans because guess what? When you halt, what happens to the enemy? Do they stop and wait while you get a, get a T and break? No, they try to counterattack and try to catch a little breathing room. And this will become an issue. Now, what we see is by July, they're moving quick. <coughs> but they're still not really doing as well as they think they should be doing. They're scoring tactical victories. They're chewing up Soviet armies in the process behind the lines. They have them trapped. But the issue becomes, what can we do to get to these places quickly? They need to score tactical victories. Well, remember the objective. Leningrad, Moscow, and we're going to the south towards the oil fields. Hitler is not a man of patience. And that's probably what ends up doing in the Germans more than anybody, anything else, is you've got a leader that has a fuse about as short as the smallest firecracker fuse. If he doesn't sense he's getting it fast enough, he gets upset. But they're scoring tremendous victories. And they're catching 400,000 plus in one week. People surrendering behind the lines, Soviet troops. What do they do with these guys? Put them in open box cars, ship them back to Germany, and incarcerate them in prison camps where they will be treated at less than the standard for the Geneva Convention. Why? Yeah, exactly. And they're viewed as political problems as opposed to war soldiers. Well, if you're a political issue, you, then you can become, you can be treated any way you want to. And some of them will be shot. Is that the reason for the Stalin well, because the truth well, if you're Stalin, if you're captivity by the Germans. Exactly. And that's going to fortify the Russians to stand and fight, because they can't give up. Better to die than to be shot in the back, or to be taken prisoner. So with those dire consequences, why not stand and what? Fight. And that will be the case. So they start, and this is the shift. They race up towards Leningrad. They begin to, to, to advance towards Leningrad, launching assaults on Leningrad, and all of a sudden, Hitler begins to get worried because the casualty rates begin to do what? Skyrocket. And he tells his commanders, no. No more attacks. Surround them and starve them out. Well, if you know where Leningrad is located, it's on a what? Peninsula. 
have the Baltic Sea on one side, have a huge lake on the other side, and you have the Finns coming from the north. It's not, or sorry, it's Isthmus, not a peninsula. You don't have anywhere to go. You're surrounded. And we'll, when we identify with that a little later tonight, in fact, a few minutes, we're going to be seeing how this is going to play out.